is the general formula for synthetic division. It says first you drop a sub n. b sub n minus 1, the first coefficient on the new polynomial will be a sub n. Then you multiply times c and then you add the column. Then you multiply times c and you add the column all the way over. And on the end you get the remainder. And these n coefficients here, 0 through n minus 1, are the coefficients of your quotient. Okay, example 2, we're going to do synthetic division to divide this polynomial by x minus 2. I think we did that one in class, but I also have it here in the notes. Scroll down a little. So we put the coefficients. We had 4, x to the fifth, 7, x to the fourth, minus 6x to the third, plus x squared, 0x. We've got to put in the placeholder, minus 8. Drop the 4, multiply to get 8, add to get 15, multiply to get 30, add to get 24, multiply to get 48, add to get 49, multiply to get 98, add 0 plus 98 to get 98. 2 times 98 is 196. Negative 8 plus 196 is 188. So the remainder is 188, and these are the coefficients of the quotient. 4x to the 4th, plus 15x to the 3rd, plus 24x squared, plus 49x, plus 98. Okay, now we come to the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem says if the polynomial p of x is divided by x minus c, such as we might do with synthetic division, then the remainder is actually going to be the value p of c. The remainder, when you do synthetic division by x minus c, will be the same number you would get if you plug c into the polynomial. If you look back at the previous example, if you were to plug 2 into the original polynomial and evaluate it, you'd get 188. You might want to check that. Here's the quick proof. The division algorithm says that if we divide p of x by x minus c, we'll find a quotient q of x and a remainder. And it said that the remainder would have a degree that was less than what we divided into it. And the only thing that has a degree less than x minus c would be a constant. So r is actually a constant. So p of x is equal to x minus c times whatever the quotient is plus the remainder. And then it's really easy to see that if you plug c in, then c minus c will be 0, that'll cancel out, and you're going to get r. That should be an r right there. Sorry about that. If you plug in, you'll get 0 times q of x, or no, no. We get 0 times q of x plus r equals r. Okay? So if you plug in c, you get r, you get the remainder. Okay, we're going to use that on example 3. We're going to do synthetic division, divide by x minus 3, to evaluate and show that p of 3 is equal to 0. So here that is. I set up to do synthetic division. I put the coefficients 1, 3, negative 10, negative 24. We want to show that 3 is one of the roots that p of 3 equals 0, so we're going to put 3 out here and do synthetic division. We drop the 1, multiply 1 times 3 to get 3, we add and get 6, multiply by 3 to get 18, we add and get 8, multiply and get 24, we add and get 0, which shows us that the remainder is 0. We can then use that to factor. We divided by x minus 3 and found that the quotient was 1x squared plus 6x plus 8 with a remainder of 0. So the po original polynomial is exactly x minus 3 times this quotient. And then I can factor x squared plus 6x plus 8 farther here to get x minus 3 times x plus 2 times x plus 4. So by doing synthetic division and getting a remainder of 0, I've shown that p of 3 is 0, which means that it's equal to x minus 3 times the quotient. And then I can further factor the quotient. We have a few more problems left. Example 4, let p of x equal this polynomial that we looked at before. Use synthetic division to divide by x plus 1. So we're going to put a negative 1 out there. Remember, whenever you divide by x minus c, you put c out there. So here, c is actually a negative 1. If you set x plus 1 equal to 0, you get negative 1. And the remainder will be p of negative 1. So we'll do synthetic division with a negative 1 to find what p of negative 1 is.